Wait no more. 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 Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's good? It was good, man. Hey, man. I got my guy with me, man. Body by Ted. Big yeah. girls move in the building. I just made the cut. Yeah. Man, you always made the cut. You on our you on our original app, man. You on, <laughs> you on the first wait no wait no more app, bro. Hey, you doing, like, man? Get on the second and third one too. Hey, you there, man? How you been? I've been good, man. You know what I'm saying? Just focusing on these big girls. Hey, I heard that. So, man, we just, you know, we just started the podcast or whatever. We just, you know, chopping it up or whatnot. But we also want to, um, you know, talk to influential people. Uh, we'll have some comedians, athletes, you know, trainers, doctors, educational pieces and all that. So wait no more. Go be a Wait no more talks gonna be a wide variety of you know conversations, different people and all that stuff. So I'm glad you joined us, man. I appreciate it, man. Look, Barry, I just jumped out the shower. You know, if you don't cool off, your head gonna be sweating. <laughs> be sweat. So, so who 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 is who is Ted, man? Who is Ted and what made you get into fitness, man? Um, Ted is this trainer that's gone, you know what I'm saying, just give you a different look. Um I came in the game. Really, no one was given a chance at the time. Uh, other trainers, they weren't trying to match up. So I had to just figure it out and jump in my own lane and make it go. You feel me? When you say match up, what you mean match up? Uh, when I first came in, I used to be trying to jump in with other trainers, trying to do other classes. But at the beginning, like I said, boy, that first year of training, like everybody was like, who is Ted? Who is Ted, don't, Ted ain't no trainer. Ted play ball. That ain't no – you know what I'm saying? So – it took about a year for them to understand that I know what the hell I'm doing with this fitness. Yeah. What where you play ball at? Uh I went to Alabama AM and then I went to transferred to Stillman and Tussle Lucy. So so you think it just wasn't taking you serious? No, nah, like no, nah, it just took them a minute. It took it definitely took them a minute. They was like, nah, Ted, you ain't no trader. Cause back in the days I used to have clothes and stuff like that too. Yeah. I used to be like, what them clothes at? Ain't nobody trying to train. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, ain't nobody. Even my mama, for real. Like, <laughs> my mama actually, like, when I finished college and I wanted to train, and I told my mama, I was like, I want to be a trainer. My mama said, train ain't going to pay no damn bills. You need okay. to get. I was like, mom, now I want to train. You feel me? She was like, nah, ain't no training. Get out. She put me out. Oh. So, <laughs> so, so. Going into be wanting to be a trainer out of school or whatever, what obstacles you face? Like, what are some of the obstacles you face? I know you just said the trainers didn't want to match up, but like, what are some of the obstacles you face? Um, just to be honest with you, the streets. You know, it, it was it was kind of hard just letting that the streets go and just saying this is what you need to be doing to just stri strictly training. So I could never just give my all to the training at the beginning because I was running around in the streets. Mm -hmm. So, I just had an incident. It might have been about five years ago, four or five years ago, that I had to talk with God, and He was like, "If I just, I was like, man, I don't even want to do this no more." And I just got this sign, was like, just drop everything and lock in on this training. And from then on, it just everything started going my way. What um, so I training when you when you started out. Babe, bring me neck, so, so now we had a big girls move. When mm -hmm. you started out, were were you focusing on that, or you was focusing on just, you know, training? Because back in the day, then you used to train Lou. Yeah, I was I was strictly athletes, but you know, athletes are seasonal. So I was like, I I can't deal with like coming from the streets to having a season off. You feel what I'm saying? Like when they finish playing ball, now you're looking for the next sport. Like what's next? Mm -hmm. And your money dropping low, that train because training is an up and down game. So I had to figure out something. I was like, I done trained all the athletes, I done trained all the Instagram models, the bad women, but 
they don't want to pay. You feel what I'm saying? Like they ain't want to pay nothing. She fired. She just thinks you can do a shout out. I'm like, feel it. she feel entitled. Yeah, I like man. <laughs> yeah. So I just started. How I really started spreading my name, I just started paying influencers. All right. I started paying influencers, and somebody like me, when I started pushing big girls' moves, I used to go in the club by myself just to scout big girls. You like most folks go to the club try to find them, a, you know what I'm saying? Put together a woman like all the way. I'm like, no, nah, I'm gonna find that group of fat girls and we finna get some bottles. <laughs> I did probably two times a week for about six months. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and it just started growing. Like, who is this? Who are they trying with all these fat girls in this section? Like, I mean, or who is this dude? They wouldn't know I was a trainer. Right. So it just started growing from there. And I just started showing love to the plus size community because I noticed in the fitness industry, I feel like I opened up the door for trainers to want to train plus size women. At first, everybody want that content with that flat stomach fat, but you know what I'm saying? Everybody wanted it at first. Nobody wanted them big girls. They were just taking them big girls' money. You know so right now, what you saying? I'm waiting no more. Ted is the one that started the fact. The, oh, uh, the oh. fact of wanting to train plus size women. I opened the door. <laughs> I say, Listen, when I when I first started saying fupa, and everybody was looking at me crazy, or I was calling people fat, or or you big. Nobody was. Everybody was like, oh, he shouldn't say that. But now. Everybody saying fupa. Everybody want to train a big girl. It's like I, I know I opened the door for that. So what? At what point? At what particular point? What made you want to just say, okay, I'm just gonna lock in. My niche is gonna be the plus size community. Um, I had been saying it for about, cause this is my fourth year with uh, doing big girls move. I had been saying it probably about two years before that. But I never got around to it because, like I said, one foot was in, the other foot was out. So I wasn't mm -hmm. focused on really just training. And then, like I said, I had that talk with God. And then at this point, I probably had like 14 trainers in my gym. So I was just filling up my classes for for the trainers can get their clientele up. You see what I'm saying? So one day we had a meeting, and they was like, I only thing I was asking them was give me $50 every person you take out of my group, right? And they say, we had a meeting. They was like, so what you will do if we leave? I'm like, y'all, I'll do this. I'm doing this for y'all. Like, I could pack the gym my damn self. You feel what I'm saying? So I had a meeting, and they were just like, like, I needed them. So I, when somebody, when they, when you put my back against the wall, like, I need you, I'm going to show your ass. So the next day, I said, I'm looking for 100 big girls, first month, $60. Mm -hmm. 300 women outside the next day. Wow. 300. And from that point on, I said, oh, yeah, I got some. What is this? You just posted it on social media or something? I mean, that's it. I posted on social media. I said, I'm looking for 100 plus size women that weigh over 250 pounds. And I'm talking about the line was right around the gym. Instead of me doing one class, I had to turn it to four classes. Mm. And from that point on, about Two months later, I think I started my online program maybe December, right before uh COVID hit. That that December before COVID hit, and it was perfect time because perfect time. Perfect because I had been on the road signing up. I probably had signed up in about maybe about three months. I made a signed up like in person, maybe six hundred women. Mm. And then I, I was rolling. I'm talking about we were doing like we was doing a lot of stuff together, going bowling. So I was just really building the community at the time. And then that COVID hit, but I had already started online. In the first three months of COVID, shit, I did a half a meal. Wow. Show. So it just took, it actually took off from that. Cause to me, if you make it about the clients, I see a lot of trainers making it about themselves, looking at themselves. It, it don't work like that. If you just make it about them, put back into the community. Um, like I do a lot of stuff for like the same thing y'all be doing, but I, I do a lot of different stuff. Like I don't bought clients' cars, I don't pay mortgage for six months, I don't bought Louis bag, Gucci bags, you know what I'm saying? I don't looked out a lot for them. So it's it's never about the money if you love what you do for real, for real. Because the money gonna come regardless if you love what you do. That's dope. What what a um so 
okay, you said something about calling them fat, fupa, and all that stuff. Do women get offended, or have you ran into them getting offended and oh, he he disrespectful and he body shaming and all that stuff? Oh, really, on the internet, on the internet, because once they sign up, they already know how I talk, and I'm pretty good at balancing and knowing who can take what. I know what words to push on certain people. And I know some of them I can say, get your big ass over here. Mm -hmm. And some of them I say, come on, big girl. Or come on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, you gotta just know how to balance. And like I grew up in the house with women, so I know how to balance that shit real good. And like I've had incidents where um they cry or they walk outside and I I'll walk on my side. I'm still gonna be tough, but I know how to balance and calm it down, up and down. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm, I might not be talking to you. Just close your ears. Mm -hmm. Talk my shit regardless. I can't not talk my shit because that's what makes the program. And I think that's what that goes with, you know, all trainers and, um, you know, that's what makes a good trainer. Being able to decipher, you know, through everything and knowing your clients, knowing your members, because I really feel it's all about your members buying into you buying into yeah. you buying into you know what you're selling like you know you got all like you said the trainers that focus on them the great bodies the crazy workouts and stuff if you don't have your clients buying into you you ain't gonna get no results because they ain't gonna keep coming no nah, they're not like and, and it's sometimes it's i don't had a class where i'm not there and it's a community right and i don't be at that class i got other trainers doing that class and everybody, I went back to the club. Let me tell you, it's just a little quick little story. No, nah, go ahead, bro. We on your time. So I got a class, and they probably going to be mad because I'm about to start back doing the class. I got a 6 a.m. class. It may be about 30 people in there. I don't never do the class. Other trying to do the class. So I ain't seen these women in about four, five, six months, for real, to be honest with you. So I go do a free boot camp on a Saturday, and I tell, six, make sure it's 6 o'clock there. When I tell you everybody still fat in that mug, <laughs> everybody still fat. I cuss they ass. I said, don't be telling nobody you train a big girl move and you've been running four months. That's the no community. Like, what y'all just doing this for charity? Like, yo. <laughs> like, what's going on? Everybody fat, still fat. I'm like, what the yo. <laughs> yeah, whole class. Like, what the hell? All of this shit. I said, I got to fight. I done had these kids, so I was like, shit, I can't do that 6 a.m. in the morning, but I'm finna, shit. Oh, you got to go back. I got to go back. Because it's your brand. Yeah, I'm like, don't tell anybody y'all playing with me. I'm talking about everybody look like balloons in that moment. I'm like, oh. Like, what y'all go out to eat in the morning? They go out to eat out the workout. Oh. What? <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. <laughs> everybody, everybody, food for prospering. <laughs> so they do the class, they go have pancakes and stuff. After well, the you talk, I think they come cook at, after the class. <laughs> they must got breakfast done. I'm like, boy, yeah. They were looking at me like, he's so mean. I did. I'm like, <sighs> if somebody ain't telling you who close to you, telling you you gain the weight or you still look the same, they ain't really your friend. Like, oh my goodness. No, nah, that, that, that's always told me this. She said, "If you can't help them, don't talk about them." Mm. Well, I know I can help them, so that's why. I so told that's them. why you talk about that's them. Exactly why. <laughs> exactly so, why. So you 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 mentioned kids. Um, so you're a family man. Um, you just been married a year. Yep. You got married right before me. A few months before me. I'm going on a year. Um, you look good too. Uh huh. Congrats to y'all again too. Hey man, appreciate it. Appreciate that. We we coming up. We we headed on the um trip in a week. This week, actually. We um we headed on our um that was, yeah, I, did, I did that 30 days because y'all was trying to get ready. <laughs> yeah, trying to get ready. It was fun, it was fun. <laughs> so we doing our anniversary and honeymoon because we didn't um we wasn't able to go on our honeymoon because um Right before we left, my um best friend had to have brain surgery. So I, yeah, I was, I was with huh? yeah, he good now. I was with him for like two weeks, not probably three weeks, um, through the surgery and stuff. So uh, we actually couldn't um uh, leave. But uh, yeah. Um so it's been a year. 
you know, kids? And how how is that family man, businessman, running a gym? How do you you know manage the whole thing? Like how how difficult it is? If it's difficult for you, like how how is that? I live for this shit. Like this, like that getting up in the morning and looking at my wife and my kids. Like before I leave, it's like it's it's a, it's a it's a motor for me, and I don't really think it like bothered me like it's not it's not no pressure at all it's not no pressure at all i know if i want to take off that's the thing about it being if you do what you supposed to do and you the boss of your own company you can take a break when you want to take a break so when it's time for family it's time for family like i used to be out all the time i'd be at home with the kids or with my wife i don't even like going out without my wife it's boring I'm looking around like damn i should just stay home with my wife I don't even That's go out without her for real. For real. For real. Well, it's perfect time. And this little one just came in. She she ain't seen me in two days, man. I went to um homecoming. So this is her first time seeing me since she's been back. I miss you. You got that, Troy. Give me a kiss. All right, go back in there. I'll be in there. Okay. Hey, look, she lit. My son in here. It's over with. <laughs> yeah, I went to Troy uh, for homecoming. No, I'm like that too, bro. Like I, I really found myself, one of my partners was in town and he went to um he went to magic i met him at magic and i was like damn man i ain't been to magic in so long like I, I just realized like i don't really be going out like that like once you you know you leave once i leave the studio your mission different now yeah it's completely yeah. different bro yeah. and it's like i found my i found my purpose it's like i feel like i found my purpose you know what i'm saying i found my purpose you in feel it. like you did yeah it's dope bro and i you know what i'm saying i really i really enjoy it you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah i'm really enjoy it what about your son man how um how old is he three and four months three i got a three else. and a four month he's something else like dennis the minutes boy don't <laughs> like dennis the minutes i'm talking about you wild animal how how do how is wife you as far as um uh, working out? How how often she work out? Like, do do you train her? At times, at times when she want when she feel like being, cause I don't have no on and off switch. When I train, I train. I don't care if you, my mom, my grandma, do these damn squats. You feel me? Like <laughs> you are gonna do them right? So it's she have a times, but she go to the gym. Uh, she go to the gym every day and do the cardio, but she ain't doing too much of squatting and lifting unless yeah. you know what i'm saying she just feel like we finna go on a trip <laughs> <laughs> like we finna go on a trip for real so but, like you just told me about you know i found my purpose so why is it so important to you like why is the health and wellness so important to you um because i've lost a lot of people in my family because i come from a country ass family when they eat fat back hog mall chitlins and it's just a different time now and i done lost i done lost family members i just lost a family member um maybe about three months ago mm. uh he's my cousin and he always called me about workouts he a truck driver so i really was thinking about coming up with um an app for truck drivers for fitness um Whoever watching this, I already patented it, so y'all ain't gonna get it. But hey, bro, <laughs> listen, listen, bro, listen, bro. Hey, I'm gonna tell you now, bro. I'm gonna tell you now. See, see, I'm, I'm gonna show you because I don't want to hear this when when wait no more jump. I don't want to hear it now. I don't want to hear it, bro. Do it. I don't want to hear it, bro. What you Look, on our app, bro? Look on what the road. Say? On the road, it's for truck drivers. I don't want to hear it now. It's all right. Listen, hey, look, hey, look, we gonna listen. listen. We gonna we gonna sign the NDA. Hey, listen. I don't want to hear it. Listen. No, I got some for that though. See, you thinking like most people, other people thinking. I got something that's gonna make it more catchy. So we'll talk offline. You feel hey, me? Hey, let, let's do it, bro. You know I'm all about linking up. Let's make something happen. I don't want to hear it though. When he. Hey, I did, I did that, I did this podcast, and he done already, he done oh, already. I'm gonna, call you. I'm gonna call you and catch you up front, like, man, what's up with that, bro? You know you gonna <laughs> let me in, bro. He like, I didn't call it eighteen, I call it sixteen. 
full of n- <laughs> Hey, this for box trucks, man. This ain't even for this. <laughs> you know, you know how these <laughs> you nah, that, this game longer, you know already. That's 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 dope, bro. That's dope. I um I definitely I definitely think is a niche out there for it. And and that'd be my thing too, man. And that's what why do you feel first of all, what do you feel about the Atlanta fitness scene? Like as far as uh, Atlanta as a whole? It's the shit really, but it's just if you didn't jump in, if you didn't jump in a few years ago or you didn't come in with a name already, it's about over. Yeah. Yeah, it's saturated. Like, even though it's people for everybody, but you got to pay attention because a lot of people come around. Like, with me, I don't mind giving the game. I give all everybody the game because what's for you is for you, what's for me for what's for me. And I'm not tight when it comes to – um like I said, giving the game. A lot of trainers will come to you like they want to be your teammate. It's, it's okay to keep it cool. Like, I'm just trying to grow my brand. But a lot of trainers will come to you saying they with the team, but they really just trying to grow their brand and go on by their business. That's what I see all the time. And I don't mind doing it, but just be honest when you come in asking for help or you're just saying you need a mentor in the game. Tra- training the new rapping in Atlanta. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, what's going on? Like, people didn't think you can – Training money, they ain't got no money. Back in the day, like right, when I first started training, people like, you ain't gonna make no money training. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna make no money training. I had a dude tell me, he a popular trainer too. You know him, I'll tell you later on. <laughs> he was, man, come do this, man. You ain't you ain't gonna make a million dollars being a trainer. Hey, about my fifth year in the row making over a million dollars. Wow. It, training, you feel what I'm saying? So it ain't, it ain't, it when, like, when somebody tell me some shit like that, it make me go even harder. Like harder. I be looking for the negative shit. What the negative shit is? I just throw some gas on it. Put push you push you even more. Yeah, definitely, definitely. What what um? So about your training style, I saw the um the smoking. Oh yeah, the smoking thing. What what's up with that? Explain that to me. What, what y'all got going on over there, bro? Um, really. We wanted to do it like the, the cannabis. Uh, we at first we were saying, "How do it feel?" We were just testing out experience, experiencing, like, because ninety nine percent of athletes smoke, especially football, basketball players. They're not because all all the ones I've trained, they smoke fifteen blunts a day, like I do. Mm-hmm. So, um, I knew that it would have us smoking during the workout. I knew it would catch a lot of attention because in the last probably month that that video has been reposted and shared on Facebook and Instagram over half a million times. Mm-hmm. So I knew what that would do. Like that content, I, I go for shit for content. Like, no, we're not finna smoke while we working out all the time. We just wanted to do it for content. Mm-hmm. But I want to do something different, like running sprints and smoking at the same time. Mm-hmm. I want to make people like, damn, they can do like, you know what I'm saying? So, most people are against it. A lot of people are against it. But if I could do it, I know for a fact we would have a thousand people in that class. Wow. Trying to do that. Like my DMs got was so full on trying to people trying like, what is GM at? What, when y'all do it? When the next section is? Or oh, I want to do it, Ted. Like I know if I did this on a Friday night and made it like a we could talk about it because I'm telling you, <laughs> it'll be tough. And I'm telling you, we look, we have to do a private, private invitation because they gonna come mm-hmm. shut that down. They definitely could. <laughs> shut, shut that bitch down. I was looking for a venue in LA to do it. What What is some? Well, I guess with that or without that, like, what's some of the weirdest or give me like a funny or a weird story that happened while training or with one of your members or something like that. Let me get yeah, this out there. More than time. And I always tell trainers this. I'm like, Ted, how did you grow so fast? I said, man, I ain't fuck my clients. But y'all be fucking up when you be fucking your clients and your, and your name get bad out here. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my clients, right, I had been training her and her husband for about, maybe about four or five years, right? So she came, came to me in class one day. Her husband hadn't been to me in about a year. She came to class. She was like, uh, I got something to tell you, Ted. 
I'm like, what? He said, um, my husband think uh that I'm fucking you. I'm like, what? Why he think? Why he think that? I'm like, I'm close as hell to her. Like, what the hell? You? Why he think? <laughs> I'm like, because he went through my phone and seen my other dude. I like, so what I gotta do with me? She said, in my phone, he saved it. Right now. <laughs> so, oh no, that ain't the end though. That, that, <laughs> that ain't even the end. <laughs> That ain't even the end. So I said, did you tell him? Did you tell him it wasn't me? She said, no, because then he'll find out who the real person is. Whoa. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'll tell you this. This shit's so funny. I, I, for a whole year, I did my classes with the strap on me. It's the it people with me with a strap on my hip. Like, I'm talking about the whole, everybody like, why this nigga got a gun? Cause I don't know what. Listen. You don't know when he coming. Yeah, I don't know when he coming. Have you saw him again? Like, no. Never saw him oh, again. Can't come to my clan no more. It's and over. They been coming to me paying faithfully. It wasn't even about the money. They're like, man, you got me out here looking like that. Like, come on, man. Me and will kill you over that woman. Yeah, you, you really playing. Like, yeah. she tripping. Like she really had me like, I was like, oh. I said, so when you gonna tell her? I ain't cause then he gonna know. I said, then he gonna then he gonna think you it ain't. She did not tell him. I don't know. That's I, crazy. Conversation I might have my strap on me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yo, that's wild, yo. She did tell him. No, nah, that 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 that's why that's dangerous. Look, hey, look, dude, I had enough. One more last situation. Nah, this, go ahead, this, bro. Go this, ahead. So I was like, I had the other uh, girl training with me, right? And she was doing two a days. Big girl now. <laughs> she doing two a days. So uh, she was <laughs> organized, I was. So she's like, I'm going to help you too. I'm going to print, I'm going to type up some stuff. Blah, blah, blah. So about a few months went by. The husband called me. I don't even know. He, I'm laying in the bed with my wife. He say, uh, hey, bro. I'm like, what's up? He like, I said, who this is? Man, you know who this is? I'm like, no, who this is? What you saying? He said, bro, you fucking my wife? I said, what? I'm laughing. I'm putting on speakerphone for my wife to hear. He like, yeah, man, she been, she been she's doing more stuff for you than she do for me. And then she's spending a lot of time at the gym. Right? So I'm like, bro, look. I don't want your wife, bro. Not at all. I'm just telling you straight up. I said, mate. I said, my wife bad. I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, tell I'm telling you. I said, dude, that's night and day, boy. I don't know what you got going on. Like, what you think? <laughs> this ain't it. So, I am not so, interested. Right. So a month go by, he called me again. He said, man, I think you lying to me, bro. I'm like, this time I, I ain't got a number to say. Still ain't got a number to say. I think you lying to me, bro. But my, my wife can vouch. I said, bro. You caught no more. Forget that. He came to the gym. We doing class. I got about 60 women in the class at the time, right? I tell somebody to take over class, walk outside. He like, no, nah, you ain't got to get high style, but bro. I like looking at me like this, like, man, I think you still, I think you and my wife fucking, bro. Like looking at me up and down. I said, bro, what you want to do? Is he, she there? Yes, yeah, she, she there. there. But, but she's standing down some. I like, nah, like, go on down there. Don't even come down here. Like, don't, cause I'm finna. I don't want to, you know how men get when they woman can hear them getting talked to a certain yeah. way. So I, I, we just only gonna stay down there. So I like, bro, you got one more time, bro. Play with me, but right okay. Now Ted, don't get hostile. It's just somehow I feel. I like, well, you need to get that insecure shit out you. I don't want you. <laughs> Two, three weeks went by. This nigga called me again. I'm saying shit. I said, look, bro, I'm good where I'm at right now. I'm telling. You. I said this your last time for real. Man, if I was one niggas <laughs> down for somebody to say that, but <laughs> I know you ain't fucking, <laughs> fucking hold, up. hold up, hold up, Ted, 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 hold up, hold up. Hey, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, what you say? You your your internet had froze. What you say? You told him what? I said, bro. If I was doing 20 years and your wife snuck in, I still wouldn't fuck her. That lets you know, nigga, I'm not interested in your wife. Like, 
That nigga said, damn. <laughs> he said, damn. For somebody to say that, I know you ain't fucking about what. <laughs> so look, after after that incident, he oh. told her, right? He told her what I said, but she had an attitude. So like, so so if you was doing <laughs> you was <laughs> no. <laughs> No, no, go find me a guard. Go find me one of them guards. <laughs> you know, a guard if you have a fat boot. Oh my goodness, yo. Hey, that had to be a humbling experience. For hey, he did. He Bruh. started a different. Oh my Bruh. goodness. Bruh. No, but I'm just, that's how I had to, I had to be mean, but he he had a cool wife. I don't know why he, he just insecure. He's got a pretty cool wife, like on some real shit. A faithful, I can tell. Like she ain't dealing with nobody but his ass, and his insecure ass. And they kind of find out his ass probably was doing what he was doing. That's why he was feeling like that. Do do you um do you train a lot of couples? Mm, yeah, actually through my program, I done had about in the last ten years, probably about ten people get married. Yeah, like actually meet in the gym and get married. So do that be. Is that the only issue you had, like, with those the only issues you had with, like, insecure men or anything like that? Um, yeah, I have problems with when I end up sometimes training um, couples, the husband end up training first just to see. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, but, man, I don't, I'm good. You feel like <laughs> I, I ain't messing up my money, and that's before I even got married. Mm -hmm. And I'm not doing, I'm no, I don't want the big girl. I, you know what I'm saying? I took a couple big girls up through that back in my day, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm fine over here. <laughs> no good. No good. Hey, y'all are, y'all are not this when I'm laying beside. No. Like, I'm fine over there. I am good. Mm, you good. What, what, what is some of the most challenging parts about like living a healthier lifestyle, dieting and different things like that? What you think of some of the most challenging things of that? Um, I go through the same shit these fat girls go through. Like, I, <laughs> I'll be like, Damn, I might gain 20 pounds, lose 30 pounds. Gain 15 pounds, lose 10 pounds. Like, the challenging part is, I think just in my house, if if my wife was to go how I go, like, I, the whole house has to be on point. Sometimes, like even in the plus size uh, community in their houses, they might have their husband that still want to eat pork chop and all this, but she cooking it for him. But then she got to eat a salad. I think the best way to um, attack a lot of situations is the whole family needs to, you know, what I'm saying, go in together, because that's kind of messed up. Where I hear a lot of family like, I gotta cook these kids food. No, make them kids eat what you eat. Why mm -hmm. you want to get them to fry? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fried everything like that. But that really be the the most challenging part of I think I think everything would change. What's up? I think everything would change if the whole family was to lock in on stuff. That's what that's what my problem is because I want a salad. My wife would fix me a salad, but then fix spaghetti and and some and some garlic bread with three cheese on that motherfucker and some, <laughs> and, and, and some, or then the little salad on the side. I'm like, man, I love that shit. Whole house you be eating what I'm eating. Exactly. I got I gotta get a little piece of that. Yeah, like damn, don't do me like that. Like, make me a plate. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what, what makes it hard to be honest with you. But um a lot of women that I, I come encounter with, they're more like big women, women anyway, they don't eat much. And that'd be the hardest part trying to tell a woman to consume four or five meals a day when she only eat one meal and a snack and they don't understand that they just slow your metabolism down and your food is just gonna keep growing <laughs> you feel what i'm saying like that'd be the main issue with women because women hate eating they just like they think eating one time a day they're gonna lose some weight when they're really gonna make you gain weight mm -hmm. but, what what is your what is your training style like you you focus more on Cardio, hit, strength training. What what what's more your your um training style? Um, mine is more cardio, mm -hmm. cardio and hit. Rapid questions, rapid questions. I'm what supplement? It. 
supplements you take? Um, none really, for real. I'm not on that really. No supplements. I, no, I don't do no supplements. All right, one workout. If you had to just pick one work, you going to the gym, one workout. What would that be? Um, sprints. Tough, tough, tough. Sprint. One cheat, one cheat meal. You've uh, been doing great. You've been doing great all all month. Time for one cheat meal. What's that? No, again, a whole pig, boy. <laughs> 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 I'm eating there, bacon, mama. I'm eating everything on it, mama. <laughs> well, uh, probably got to have a triple burger, cheeseburger, with everything on it, mama. I got to have a greens burger. with some curly. See, I go. I'm gonna tell you what I do. I I know they're supposed to be rapid, but I'm gonna tell you what. I do. <laughs> I'm going to get me a burger. Uh, damn, I'm going to get me one of them. Uh, and with them big burger called. I'm gonna tell you we got some good ass burger. Damn, what's the name on? I'm a bur burger fanatic, bro. It's there you go. Andretti's. I Andretti's got a, a, a triple stack burger. I get that. And then I go get Andretti's? Yeah. That more was good. Tell them what's up, man. What's up? What's up, what's up big man? Give my shit, man. Go on about your business. Huh? See, you got them girls. You get to talk different. I said, get your ass out of here. <laughs> mm, bye-bye. I don't know. Yeah, I got to I gotta check that out at Andretti's, bro. Hey, I'm talking about they burgers. Good. No more. Yeah, I got to right, check that out. Huh. I'm talking about good. And then I go to uh, I go to Arby's and get my curly fries. So yeah. you just go, go to another <laughs> spot to get <laughs> I like that turkey sandwich at Arby's, though. Uh, I ain't had it. I like the tur yeah, turkey turkey club for the curly fry. The, tur <laughs> the, tur curly the turkey. The turkey. I that motherfucking cheese. You making me hungry now? I'm fucking turkey. <laughs> turkey club at Arby's pretty good. Yeah, I fuck with it though. What what's what's the recovery for you? Like, if you've been working hard all week, what, what's your go to recovery? Um, ice tub and um, I go to stress zone. Yeah, I'm a member of stress zone. I go stretch on twice a week and get an hour stretch. I didn't put it on the charger. You ain't let, no, you gotta go put it back on the charger. They got 2% on it. Then you're gonna be right back in here. He don't let that tablet charge. What? What's your top two reasons you chose to live a healthier lifestyle? Everybody, most, I got some fat people in my family. <laughs> <laughs> Them fat people scare me. You feel me? Like I cannot be like that, boy. But um, now one time in my life when you know all athletes go through this when they you finally know that you're not going to the lead. You know what I'm saying? Like damn, and I just was down. Got to face it. that. Yeah, like damn, I got my game. I'm about two sets high. I had got beat, and I I told this story on one of my workouts. I was in Club Miami one night. And I, I had, nigga, I had braids, boy. I had, I had braids. I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I'm about 270, 275. I look in the mirror at the club. I said, no wonder, ain't nobody talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn, I'm ugly, boy. <laughs> it was the day before Mother's Day, boy. My mama had me say, well, you need to cut your hair. You ugly as hell. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, shit. I'm in the club. I just dip. Everybody called me. Like, what the hell? What happened to Ted? Hey, ain't nobody seen what happened to Ted. Nigga, they bought him. Go get a haircut. And I started my way like a bird. <laughs> <laughs> my mom was on the hell. I cut my hair. She like, that's what I'm talking about right now. She said, because you talk. Look, my one thing my mama told me when I was young, she said, you can be ugly. As long as you smell good, you dress good, and you got some money, they don't care about how ugly you are. You good. <laughs> you good. You said keep it held now, nah, you know what I'm saying? Keep trailed though. Nah. I said, cool. You good. You good. I'm definitely good. What what are some of the um what I know you said the influences? What are some of your um 
you know, celebrities that you train, like some of your clientele? Um, I done trained some everybody from uh, Shikana, um, Spice, Tammy, uh, Walker, uh, Lou Will, uh, Cam Newton, uh, Tokyo, um, Lil Meech, um, Woody from uh, Woody from Power and mm-hmm. Woody from Power. Uh, uh, oh no, it's a long, it's a long ass list. I probably got about fifty names on that mug. Porsche, Candy, that's dope, bro. You, that's dope. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm going real, like. But as I, I, what I learned though about marketing and influencers is you don't always have to go get the big names. You just got to use the small names you got around you. Mm-hmm. Cause the small names going to push you better. Like you'll get a quick hit with the big names. you like influencers or people following you and getting your followers up. But if you use your community, like I got a, uh, I got a community like this year online. I signed up so far, like 63,000 women and I built the community. Like, so I can talk to my women at any time, a group, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the most, that's what's going to push for you, the smaller people. Mm-hmm. The, the influencers, they're going to push for you when you give them that money. But the smaller people, they ain't. But they the ones who count for real. Them the ones who going to sign up with you. But only it's organic. Reason, yeah, but the only reason I use it, I, like not use influencers, but that's part of the game, is I, I got the type of program where if you see a woman three four hundred pounds running fast as hell is gonna make you stop or if it's somebody on plus size on the side they can be like oh i can do that so that's why i do it like that but um besides that big girls is the move you feel me and i got my coming out of december if you i got what now I might push it to uh february though um, what is it uh, it's called same plug different weight what you said a book yeah oh man that's dope uh it's called same plug different weight Ah, uh, that's dope when that's from, absolutely dope you feel me what um what's something what's something you'll lead the people as far as health and wellness is to getting a fitness journey or whatever like what's some advice or some guidance you you will lead the people with just start you feel me and and, and try your best to stay consistent and I, I deal with a lot of people saying they need motivation and a lot of people who say stuff like that, they have kids. Um, that should, uh, that should be your motivation. Use something to be your motivation. Don't just fold. Um, you're going to have your times where you peak out and you feel like you're not losing weight, but this fitness thing is a lifestyle. And I try to tell people you, you got to make this shit part of your life. Like how you jump on Instagram every day. You got to go work out 30, 45 minutes to an hour every day or just make it part of your life and it won't be hard. You see what I'm saying? Like I tell my clients, I'm not telling you cold turkey, stop eating bullshit, but you need to have two or three months out the year that you detox and have a cleanse. I tell them a lot of times your body is like a car. So if you want that car to go 250,000 miles, you need them oil change. You need them tune-ups. You need new tires. You need brakes. That's the same way your body is. If you don't detox or, you know what I'm saying, make changes during the year, your body's slowly going to break down like they like them cars do. Mm-hmm. But no, nah, that's that's dope, bro. I, I appreciate I appreciate the advice and um definitely, man, you know, I'm rocking with you. I um I love what you're doing. I love the niche you have. Um the um you know, just everything you do, bro. It is dope. You know, we've had our conversations. We we've sat down and chopped it up and <clears throat> you know, there's a lot in store for, um, you know, for both of us, but I um, appreciate you coming on, man. And hopefully this ain't the last time and, you know, you come back and we'll chop it up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing more too. And like, maybe bring you on with, I got a couple of guys on here or whatever, cause you can do multiple people and just, you know, had the fellas chop it up or whatever, but. I like. <laughs> I said, I like to talk anyway. Hey, man, I definitely appreciate you, bro. And 
you know where I'm at. You hit my line, bro. You need me. I'm there. We need to do a versus, man. What we doing? We need to do a versus where, like, how we do that? I'm down. I can come to your gym or you can bring your people to my gym. We can swap it up. You bring your DJ, I bring my DJ. I get three, I get uh five minutes, you get five minutes. They DJ, DJ go back and forth. Just like the person's like that. Like you trying them five minutes, I try them five minutes. My That's DJ dope. they go back and forth. Like I think it'll be some it, it's different. It, like DJs versus DJs and trainers versus trainers, clients versus clients. Let's 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 get to it. Let's put yeah. that together, bro. You better have Absolutely. your good DJ. Huh? Yeah, better have your good DJ because that's what it's gonna it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna come down to who got the best DJ now. Let let's put oh, that get off this. This is for this is for Jade and Bank. This, uh huh. This is for Jade and Bank before we get off of here. Uh huh. If they skip me one more time, I'm on y'all last. <laughs> <laughs> They've been skipping me. I be telling them y'all look y'all skip everybody up. Then y'all want to bring here. <laughs> Folks on here, like rappers that ain't even doing that for the community. But get what though? You mm -hmm. want to be one day. <laughs> <laughs> one day, don't skip, keep skipping Ted. Now, because I'm gonna skip to the front of the line in a minute. Hey, I'm about to tell him tonight, man. I'm about to tell <laughs> yeah, him tonight. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> God damn it. Hey, bro, I appreciate you, bro. And like I said, um, we'll chop it up, man, and keep doing what you're doing. I salute you, bro, and you know. Keep going, man. Keep pushing the culture. Man, you keep doing the same thing, too. I can tell that, to be honest with you, like, you can tell when somebody just doing it for the people. It, it, the money going to come regardless. And I can just tell how you do it, it's going to come regardless. Like, because the love, it's, it's all about the love. And the last thing is, I say about this all the time, I tell trainers, like, bro, you so obsessed with yourself, you're not even thinking about them. you just thinking, like, you don't think what they're thinking. To me, I think what they thinking all the time. I'm like, she don't want to hear about your abs. She don't want to hear. You don't know what it even feel like to be fat. So don't. She don't want to hear about that shit. You feel me? So that's the main thing that I be wanting to leave and let trainers know. Stop making it about you, and just put all your energy into the uh, the clients. And the money gonna come regardless once you show some love to some and they see that you genuinely love doing this. Thanks. I appreciate it, bro. Oh, love, man. Appreciate it. To the family, I said, hey. Same here, man. Tell wifey, I said, what's up, man? All right, man. We'll get up. Appreciate you. I'm going to put right. that in so we can do that version. Say no more. All right. You have a blessing, bro.